刻むでハモンのビート The Shueisha color scans of JoJo are somewhat of a point of contention among fans. Compared to a lot of other colored manga, I would probably say JoJo is one of the better ones. It's also pretty neat to see some of these characters in color. However, I think that there are a large amount of issues with the JoJo color scans, and a lot of other JoJo fans agree. The first main issue arises with how some fans view the origin of the scans. Few seem to know where these actually come from. The color scans were created for digital release by JoJo's publishing company, Shueisha, making them an official JoJo product. I've seen a ton of these people refer to these scans as if they're colored by fans. This is not the case at all. Many even attribute the scans to JoJo's Colored Adventure, which is the fan team that translates the scans. As they have stated multiple times, they did not actually create the scans or the colors. They simply apply the English translation to them. Others attribute the colors to Araki, when this is also definitely not the case. The only time which Araki actually colors the manga is in standalone pieces or in special pages. He has also contributed to the color choices of the anime, which often conflict with the colored manga. When Araki personally colors a page, they're always colored in his traditional style of varying colors. Since the Shueisha color scans are not done by him, their color choices shouldn't be considered the canon ones. Back when I did my videos highlighting the differences between the manga and anime, I had people ask why I wasn't talking about the color differences. In those videos, I talk about a difference between the manga created by Araki and the anime adaptation created by David Productions. The color scans do not represent the manga that Araki created. Jojo is a black and white manga first and foremost, and the times when Araki does color them is a bonus. A consistent color scheme does not exist for Jojo, and the only canonical colors are those which are directly described in the manga, such as Jorno's blonde hair. Araki coloring in Jorno's hair a different color doesn't conflict with this, since these pieces are created purely for aesthetic effect. The Shueisha color scans seem to have two simultaneous and yet contradictory problems. The first problem comes from their consistency. By attempting to give every character in the manga a consistent color scheme, it often makes the manga feel drab in comparison to Araki's varied colors. Their other problem is, ironically, their inconsistency, since often the colored manga makes blatant mistakes with what they're coloring. Contrary to the Araki colors, which simply aim for aesthetic effect, the goal of the Shueisha scans seems to be for consistency, to reflect the canonical version of the characters. This is often not the case, and their color choices end up conflicting with the manga. So for a segment of this video, I'll be going over some of the examples of mistakes made by the colored manga. In this early chapter of Part 1, Dio's shirt is meant to be ripped, exposing his shoulder. This is from the scene where Dio kisses Arina, and you can clearly see her ripping his shirt. However, on the chapter cover and throughout the scene, his skin is colored as if it is part of his shirt and that it was never ripped. In this panel of Part 1, Dio's teeth were colored as if they were part of his gums, giving him a very strange appearance. Here's an example of the teeth being colored as they should be. This is from the test pilot for the Phantom Blood movie. It replicates this moment in the manga with a consistent coloring, rather than making Dio look like Tommy Pickles. In his character bio, Jotaro's eyes are stated to be greenish. However, throughout the colored manga, his eyes are shown to be blue. Other JoJo media, such as the anime, portray this color correctly. Early on in Part 5, the inside of Giorno's shirt is made into his skin color, as if it's part of his back. In this chapter cover for Part 5, one of Giorno's ladybug brooches is colored as if it is part of Diavolo's skin in the background. In the fight against Goo Goo Dolls, Jolene's shoulder becomes injured. In one panel, her shoulder is colored green as if it's part of her outfit, with it being colored correctly on the same page. Here's another example in Part 6, where outside the window during a meeting of Pucci and Dio, it appears to be daytime. I've gone over this before in my Debunking Araki Forgot Part 6 video, 
Since some consider this to be a plot hole, I point out to them that the color scans are not created by Araki, but some try to counter this by saying that since it is white outside in the manga, it means that it's daytime. This is incorrect, since we can see a white sky background in many other scenes that we know for a fact take place at night. By making the sky blue, however, the color scans make it appear to be clearly more day-like than intended. Another similar mistake. In the fight against Marilyn Manson, the scene is said to take place at dusk. But there is no attempt to portray this with the colors, and the sky is clear blue like it's the middle of the day. Also in Part 6, the design of the character Lang Wrangler was colored incorrectly. As you can see from the detail of the black and white manga, his shoulders are meant to be exposed. Here's a fan-created version which properly portrays this. However, the colored manga considers his exposed shoulder to be part of his outfit and colors it accordingly. You can also see this done correctly on an official figure of the character. The Part 7 character Oyakomo Va wears American flag-themed face paint. Rather than making it red, white, and blue, the colored scans opt to make it all blue, losing the effect. You can even see them doing this correctly in their own prototype scans, so I have no idea what prompted this change. In Part 8, the head doctor is described to be wearing black. However, in the color scans, his clothes are given a different color. The head doctor also wears gloves, which can be seen in a few different scenes. However, the color scans seem to treat this as if it is his hand, giving it a strange nailless look. Hopefully this gives you an idea of some of the issues the color scans bring about. Due to the possible plot issues some of these raise, they are often erroneously attributed to Araki. So it's a good thing to be informed on the origins of these scans and their frequent mistakes. Another point is the intention of the scans. The reason they exist in the first place was for digital reading on phones. The colors are likely done to make the reading experience bearable on a small screen. They make sense for this context, and I think some often make the mistake as viewing the colored manga as the definitive version. It's quite often that I've seen people refuse to read the black and white manga, and even stopping in the middle of Jojolian to wait for new volumes. I'm somewhat of a purist when it comes to this. And in this case, I really do recommend something as close to the original experience as possible. The work which Araki created was a black and white manga, so I believe this is how the manga should be experienced. One of the best things about Araki's art is the intense detail, which the colors of the manga very often smudge over, giving it a completely different look. While sometimes it can look good, a sizable number of moments are given an airbrushed and almost blurry effect. Certain segments of the manga even look downright hideous compared to the original. And beyond all of that, some of the color choices made by these scans are very questionable. There's a reason a lot of people are thrown off by White Mariah or Toru's neon yellow pants. They just look bad. Many have also taken issue with how the color scans treat the stands of the series. Throughout Part 8, many stands have just received a tint of a single color combined with a glowing effect. This is where some of the airbrush jobs of the color scans are at their worst. These single color choices are some of the most disappointing choices for colors I've seen the scans do. Especially when we get glimpses of the new stands colored properly by Araki. Thankfully, it seems that the anime colors are actually influenced by Araki when the studio chooses to approach him about it. For Part 5, he was the one who chose the colors for many of the characters. So I do have faith that we'll see more proper anime colors for stands like Speed King at some point in the future. One of the worst things about this, I think, is that once a color scheme is shown for a character, whether it's good or bad, it ends up being treated as the default look for that character among many people. It's disappointing to see most fan art tend to lean towards the same colors for a character, rather than using some of the more varied Araki color palettes. I use color scans in my own videos for the sake of convenience and for some variety on screen but I genuinely recommend you read the manga in its black and white form. Even beyond that, I would recommend reading it physically if possible. Araki's art looks even better when it's actually on a page. For the United States, this could prove to be an issue unless you're versed in other languages. 
since the current physical manga only goes up to the end of Part 4. However, in many places around the world there are official releases even all the way up to Jojolian. While it's nice to have the color scans, I think it's very unfortunate that it seems to have displaced the original work in the minds of many people. I hope that with this video I made a decent case for why I favor the black and white version, and how I recommend it wholeheartedly for first time readers. If you want to leave ideas for future videos, leave a comment down below, or join the Haman Beat Discord using the link in the description. You can also support the channel on Patreon, and receive rewards like Discord perks and some uncut videos. And finally, for future videos, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. This is the part of the video where I thank my $5 and up patrons. Thank you to the Owl God, Alex Ramirez, Raziana, Anasui Hat, Doorbell, Cloudy, Monkman, Ashton Joseph Miller, Crayon, Jesper Jansen, Austin Nino, Rigo Vids, Zucato, Deforland, Joyless Child, and Shane Giger.